We have added, we have made and added this two battery module box. There'll be two modules that sit in the bottom of this. And then up on top, there'll be another plate that holds the master enable relay and some other relays and fuses inside this, but this is finally mounted on there. We've still got to mount the lid and drill holes in it for wiring and et cetera, but we've got that in and you can see how I've got it mounted with some, some uh, I believe that's DOM piping right there, inch and a half, but that's mounted. Something else we did on this while we had this and we were working on the frame is we added this piece of triangular piece of 3 16 uh, plate metal here and welded it in. Uh, this bracket right here is under a lot of stress. And on this particular model, there was a crack down in this area right here that was evident. I believe there might be a recall on that. I don't know, but we went ahead and cleaned that up and welded this. I call this the smile joint or the U joint. This is a U joint, but this is a U weld we made right here. So we repaired that and we put this in it to strengthen this bracket. On the other side of this vehicle back here, you can see that over here, you can see Polaris has put an additional bracket off this tube here to support this. And on this side over here, they only had just this one bracket right here. None of this was there, but we added this welded it in and we welded this little smile joint so it wouldn't crack you can see the rear drive line here as it's fully it's installed you can see the motor now back here we've got the seat bracket the rear seat bracket we had to raise it almost two inches that's in a previous video to clear the motor to have clearance right here on the motor we've also modified this front bracket right here this is the coolant outlet for the motor and inverter. We got this from EV West, a nice little billet adapter so that the spigot for the cooling system will come up straight up and not interfere with the footwell area here for this person. You can see we've got the front drive line in. We have the seat brackets and mounting in. We've got a little bit of a clearance issue here. These can, most of this can come out because I will not have a shifter. This will be a push button uh, drive park neutral reverse of course on a Tesla. There is no park park is neutral because there is no park pole on this motor, but you can see we've got this in here in the seat belts and the rear seat bracket in. Now, one thing about this, we want to come over here for just a minute. Inside this motor, and there'll be another video on it, we have changed the final drive or the drive gear. We, we pulled out the, the spider gears on this and we put in a spool from Felton. They're out of the UK. We put their spool differential in here. That's not a differential. It's a straight shot straight through here. So both these drive lines will spin exactly the same. There's going to be no slippage in them. And then we did the modifications inside this gearbox here to gear this up to, to, to midship mount this transfer case style. This is what you call a transfer case mounting of this Tesla large drive unit. And what's going on is there's a bunch of people, a bunch of fellows that are doing this in the, U in the, the UK and in Australia in various places of the world where they're taking this unit right here and mounting these right in the center of a Land Rover or a Range Rover to, to power the whole vehicle because these are, these are just over 500 horsepower. Anyway, you can see the front drive line coming out here. We also did because we cut the frame almost all the way through to install this motor mount to, uh, pipe right here. This is an extremely thick piece of round stock. We installed this brace right here to stiffen up the frame a little bit. Carrier That's bearing right. right here. We've got plenty of clearance here with the seat frame assembly, seat bracket. And then up in here, we've already got our Tesla accelerator pedal, but um, this is actually a Ford product. It's got a Ford part number. It's got full foam Oco on it. So Tesla's using Ford parts and we've got our little bracket up here. The switch isn't in here for your brake 
the brake switch. This from the from the Tesla accelerator pedal and the brake light switch are the only two inputs that are needed to run that motor in the zero EV controller. So we've done our modifications up here. Here's our battery box. You can see here, and we'll open this up a little bit. You can see our modules in there. There's 12 modules in this box and two in the other. Up here in the middle, this, these are for coolant. These are the two main lines out that will go into the smaller battery box that we just showed you. But this is the situation with this right now. We did have it rhino lined. And this is the battery that's going up underneath the unit.